Call me a stud. Call me absolutely legendary. Whatever floats your boat, really. Um, I'm happy for you to take that on your own accord and just go with whatever feels natural, okay? Is that really how you want to come into this week's show? <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're rolling. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh, you know me, I'm always looking for that entry point that does not... Oh, I know, out. you are. You always find the right point too, don't you? None of that sounded right, but hello to everybody and welcome to another <laughs> Wednesday night up late with Glenn and Chloe. Um, naturally, I'm Glenn. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I'm stud. Uh, Chloe, sorry. Far out. You, you're going to run with that one? Is that the, is that what's going on the t-shirts, Chloe? <laughs> yes. Yes, Shamalama Ding Dong and um, C Stud here, or I don't know. Okay, you can, you can be the stud and I'll be the chud. <laughs> I don't want to know what that is. <laughs> it's a horror movie reference. Oh, okay. All right. It's, that's it's, it's, it's a case of if you know, you know. Okay. I don't know and I'm not going to ask. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, let's do it. Let's get into some uh, weekly movie banter. We are the uh, the vodcast presented by Good Movie Monday. If you're new to what we do, then uh, that explains it. <laughs> Good Movie Monday is a podcast that drops every Monday. It's on all of the podcasting apps. Um, yeah, go check it out. But otherwise, this is the bonus. It's, it's, it's more than bonus content, wouldn't you say? I think it's its own whole thing now. I think yeah. we've we've extended from it. Well, it started out as bonus content, which was super fun, but I think it's kind of evolved into its own little world, which is fun. Well, it certainly has, and uh, I mean, not that it's any secret, but it will evolve into something even better next year. So, yay! I can't wait for two thousand twenty-three. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Alrighty. So normally we we start off with stuff that's been happening in the movie world and I'll be honest with you I've not come prepared at all I've had a really really lazy day and been zoned out and I'm just gonna let you as as you deserve to as you deserve to well as it so happens I've been doing some reading um uh, yes it did hurt um (laughs) however um I did read a little article that um Disney weren't going to kick Ezra Miller off uh, The Flash. A lot of double standards going on there. Yeah, it seems, seems a little silly um, to me, seeing <laughs> yeah. as how a lot of his charges have to do with harassment and assault and, you know, all the things that Disney do not stand for. Um, and yet they they basically gave him a slap on the wrist and let him continue on his way, which... Well, you know what? We are, we're not... A political podcast or vodcast or whatever you want to cast us, but he aligns with their side of politics overall, and that's the crux of it. That's that's what it comes down to these days. You know, you you can do wrong if you're of an opposing political persuasion. Uh, you can't do any wrong if you're on the same. So I think that's what it all boils down to when it comes to that bullshit. Yeah, which it is. It's bullshit. Yeah, it's absolutely bullshit. The dude's got a creepy face, and he's got a creepy way about him, and he's just a pure creep. And 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 a complete repeat offender. He's he's fucked up how many times? Like seriously, in in the last six months, I think he's been arrested three times. Yep, assault, harassment, and burglary. Come on, dude! Like, come on, dude! I think you've had your chance. <laughs> I I never liked the dude. Make Never, like, like the flash and fuck off out of like, here, you know? Like, like, like Before I knew anything about him, I didn't like him, you know? Like, he made one good movie, which put him on the map, and then after that, everything he was in, I'm like, you really were a flash in the pan for me, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like the one-hit wonder type thing. He knows how to do do the one thing, and he's just riding on those coattails type thing. Yep. Not a fan. Not a huge fan. So that really kind of annoyed me. Um <laughs> What else is going on? The Super Mario's teaser trailer dropped, which um, who anyone who knows me knows that I don't play games. Play st- I'm not a gamer. Yeah. Um, however, I I obviously did play some sort of you know Super Mario's like the racing one. You know where you get to choose your Mario character. Kart. Mario Kart. Yeah. So I was a, a Mario Karter every now and then. Um, when I would go to a friend's house. But other than that, I have nothing to do with any sort of gaming. So this didn't sort of 
um, jump out at me. <laughs> However, when I watched the trailer, um, again, this is going back to my love of animation, just like blowing out of the water and just evolving and becoming amazing every single year. Um, it looks awesome and it looks fun. It looks like something that I would want to go and watch. It certainly does look like a lot of fun. Uh, and, and it does play very true to the, the Mario legacy. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I was a massive Mario player back in the first couple of consoles days, but not so much when it turned away from 8-bit or into the 3D sort of realms. I wasn't much into that style of gaming, and this looks like it's in that sort of um, N64 yeah. onwards kind of era. Uh, but it looks fun. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, naturally it causes controversy because Chris Pratt um, is voicing Mario and he's not Italian, and what a load of shit that is. And <laughs> it's just fucking stupid. Oh, you're on the side where he didn't put an accent on? You're, well, you're unhappy with that? Well, I mean... Mario has an iconic voice. It hasn't changed since the start, you know? Mario, you know, and I'm a Luigi. Like, you know, the, those brothers have Italian voices. They are Italian plumbers, you know? Uh, I, I like the fact that Chris Pratt is playing Mario, but I wanted to have him do that. I wanted to hear the caricature. Um, we might still get some of it. Who knows? But, you know, not if John yeah, Leguizamo like has like his way. Bring it in. I feel like they'll bring it in. For some no. point, um, I don't think it'll be throughout the whole movie because I feel like that would get really sort of annoying. Well, the the irony being that the one guy in Hollywood right now that's making the biggest noise about people being cast in these roles is John Leguizamo, right? Mm -hmm. Who he's angry about James Franco playing Castro because he's not Cuban and all that kind of stuff. And yet, <laughs> and he would be angry that Chris Pratt is playing Mario, but let's not forget that John Leguizamo played Luigi in the first Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> Did he really? There he go. did. Played the little Italian plumber wearing a green <laughs> overall. So, yeah, I just hate all this bullshit. I think, um, who was it? that I think it was Rob Schneider recently said on a podcast, and he, he said it so well. He's like, you know, acting is to be somebody you're not, you know? Right. And, and, and he said, like, my career's over because, you know, all of my career has been playing ethnicities that I'm not. He's played mm -hmm. Chinese, you know, he's played Hawaiian. Like he's, he's played so many. I can, so many I characters. can see how at a, a certain point um, it would be better to cast within yeah. the sort of realm of that character. I can see within a certain point. But it, it like in some aspects I feel like it does take away from character actors who um, are able to take on those roles in a more serious role. Like we're not talking like Mickey Rooney type um, yeah. characters. I think that's a little bit too far gone. But, um, yeah, I, I'm kind of on the fence about that in terms of I feel like we should let our actors, our real actors, mm. character actors, take on those challenges if they meet the standards. Well, this is this is However, exactly right, and and it's that that's it. The last thing you said there, because it, it comes down to more than are these actors the right ethnicity. It's more like are these actors perfect for the role, you know? Because right. I mean, James Franco. Let's use that as an example. He has, I think, he has Cuban blood somewhere in his you know, family lineage, uh, and he looks like Fidel Castro. That's to me what's more important is the fact he looks like this guy, right? So he can pretend to be whatever ethnicity he wants because he looks like the guy, you know. Anyway, we're getting into a whole. <laughs> can of worms there that I I've probably you know I've probably peeled open many times on the podcast and it'll get me in trouble one day but I don't give a fuck like seriously let's um let's chill out let's all be whoever we want to be and, and an like, opinion is an opinion you're allowed to have it so that's right but let's just not give a shit who plays who in Hollywood right you know if you don't like it just don't watch it there's things that piss me off I just walk away do something else you know yeah, they're not going to be in the media if they don't kick up a stink about something. Speaking of Rob Schneider, he has just revealed that the Animal 2 is in the works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, necessary? No, Probably not. not. All. Probably not. not. At all. But what this is, because it, it, it it's in line with the fact that Adam Sandler has come out and um, pitched Happy Gilmore 2 as well, right? And these guys are now tied in very, very closely with Netflix, right? So it'll be part of the Netflix deal with Happy Madison Productions. So it's a, it's a it's a win win as far as I'm concerned because if you've got Netflix, you're not paying any more to see this film. You know, if right. it doesn't interest you in any way, you don't have to watch it. But people, the yeah. The difference is between the Animal Two and Happy Gilmore Two is Happy Gilmore Two. I can see an extension of that story. Yep. Animal Two, not so much. 
No, but um, I mean, but but I mean, if they're making it, it means they've figured out a way to do a number two, and what that entails, who knows? But once again, if you don't like the idea of it, you simply don't have to watch it. But I like the idea of it, and I would like to watch it. You know, the animal two. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Why though? Well, same question backwards. Why not? Yeah, look, I I, I think just. Me, Rob Schneider's a hit and miss as well. Like, I feel like um, him as a person who I've heard in podcasts and seen on interviews doesn't really interest me as much as Rob Schneider, the character actor, the one who can portray all these different hilarious, funny characters. Uh, His real personality has kind of tainted that for me. So I'm not so excited. That's a real shame. I love his real personality. That sort of definitely appeals to me. but either way, Happy Gilmore 2, Animal 2, I don't mind if they make sequels to all of the films that, you know, launch these guys. Do a Juice Bigelow 3 for all I care. Hated number two, but I'll go back for a third one, sure. <laughs> You're just a lover of terrible movies, aren't you? <laughs> no, that's offensive. You, you don't discriminate. <laughs> that's offensive, come on. I'm a lover of I films. I not offend you even if I tried. <laughs> All right, I'm moving to the next cup of tea. I think I'd need it tonight. Oh, my gosh, you're on two. I, I, always, I always have a production line of tea. Do you? Yeah. I had the discussion with myself. I stood at the fridge. I'm like, mm, do I alcohol or do I have tea? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I bought some grog and I was going to do that tonight. And I thought, oh, <laughs> I think a tea is probably more in order. Uh, what else have we night. got? I was reading just the other day that... Um, Tom Cruise has finally gotten his space film going. Have you heard about this? Where he's, he's actually going to be filming in space. Yeah, he's going to be the first actor of production to film in space. That's fantastic. Wow. And It's great. Of course, he has to be the first one to do it. Well, but... I mean, but the, that's a very cynical and, let's face it, Chloe thing to say when it comes to Tom Cruise. Because, <laughs> because if not for Tom Cruise, no one could do it. I mean, I'm sure so Richard Branson could have financed someone to do it. One, there's no film that would be financed without Tom Cruise's attachment. Let's just face it. He's the biggest draw card in Hollywood, right? So it's going to take someone. Really? Who's... There's not one other person. I've, I... No, but back up the train here, but contextualise all of this. Okay, you can argue he's not the biggest you know, actor in Hollywood. I would say he is. But also, there's no one of his experience to do it. No one that is as in physical. Terms, in terms of his stunts and all that kind of stuff and what he's willing to do, absolutely he's the right person. He's the only what person. I'm saying is, of course he's the, the person. That's what I'm saying. It's just like. Yeah, I know. But and, Just and... like I was getting Chris Pratt fatigue and I was getting whoever else fatigue. I'm getting a little bit of Tom Cruise fatigue. But you don't even watch Tom Cruise, so how can you be fatigued? Because all I hear about is Tom oh, Cruise, scary. Top Gun this, Top Gun that. Look, I get it. He's he's. Yes, I think if anyone's going to make a movie in space, it's going to be him, and he will probably do the best job of it. I agree with you. I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, okay, it's him. Oh, but it's, if, okay. when it comes to, when it comes to actors that you love, you will talk about them nonstop. So come on, cut people some slack. Jesus, you're on fire tonight, aren't you? It's going both ways, Chloe. It's going you both ways. You're throwing fisty cups tonight, I'll tell you what. No, I just, you know, you're laying it down and I'm picking it up. All right, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> what are we up to? We can just jump into games if you want. Sure. All right. What have you got this week? Same as last week. I've got some truth or false trivia and I've got some would you rathers. Okay. I don't have any true or false this week. That's Okay. Um, but I do have taglines, which we haven't done for a while. I've got trivia questions and then a little bit of scattered stuff. All right. Well, how about, how about I'll do, I'll do my would you rathers and then then you throw something out at me. You throw out some taglines at me. Perfect. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Far away. Let's do it. Okay. So. Would you rather be hunted by the Terminator or the T-1000? (sighs) 
<sighs> uh, I'll say the Terminator. I've got no reason for it. There's no <laughs> answer to be given for that. <laughs> it's not something I can rationalise. <laughs> Either's going to be a challenge. I feel like the T-1000 is a bit more of a challenge. Schwarzenegger and the original Terminator is all just sort of guns and ammo, whereas the T-1000 has sort of new and elusive ways. It would be um, definitely more of a challenge. So going with the Terminator, I think you have a better chance. Yeah. I mean, I kind of feel like you're fucked either way. Oh, no, you're definitely fucked either way. 100%. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Second, would you rather? Would you rather make out with Steve Buscemi or Amber Heard? Crazy eyes. Wow. Um, well, let's say Amber Heard, hands down. Like, there's no really, but she's so evil. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm also very straight. Like, it's just of you know of no appeal to me. Take that out of it. Take it out of it. She's better looking. Like, it's yeah, Amber Heard for sure. There you go. See? Style over substance. But where, where's the substance, though? Like, where's the substance either way? Like, what am I going to get out of it from... It's just making out. Like, it, what am I going to get out of Steve Buscemi that I'm not going to get out of Amber Heard? Like... A great story that you made out with Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can confirm one way or the other if she does really shit the bed. Like, it probably, you know... True, true. There yeah. you go. See? There you go. <laughs> You look at it from all angles. All right. Would Hopefully you not rather... that angle, because that'd be like <laughs> gross. Um, would you rather eat Babe or Marley from Marley and Me? Babe. La la la. You'd be okay with killing a talking pig and eating it. I'd be much better um, comprehending bacon as opposed to dog meat. Yeah, true. I didn't think about that, did I? I was just trying to find like two cute animals to decide between. <laughs> you should have gone for two that that are not usually consumed by humans. I have consumed both true. meats, and I can confirm that the bacon <gasps> is the better. You know. I mean, I haven't consumed both of those, and I can definitely say bacon is better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't say. I, I won't say. Think that one through. <laughs> I won't say where, but I was in a, a particular location and where the culture that is normal. Okay. Um, choose one: Monster Squad or Beetlejuice. That's really difficult. I instinctively want to say Beetlejuice because mm-hmm. I think Beetlejuice is definitely the more immediately accessible. I think it's a lot more immediately fun. Everything is immediate about that one; like it's just instantly great. Monster Squad, though, there's longevity there. I think it's harder to tap into. But I think it's got much more re repeat value. Like I could rewatch it a lot more. So probably yeah. Monster Squad at the end of the day. I think there's yeah. a lot more in it than there is Beetlejuice. I, th- Great I agree question. with you on that one. Great yeah, question. I, I agree with you on that one. Wolfman okay. <laughs> This this is a this is an elongated one. So you're you're in a movie. Okay. This is your movie. This is the Glenn movie. Amazing. You have to pick your movie family now. So we've right. so what you're saying is we have actually identified the new lowest earning box office movie of all time. Yep. Fantastic. All right. Yep. But you gotta have your choices. All right. So now we're gonna pick your movie family, would you rather? Okay. Sure. So we're gonna pick your dad. So would you rather Eugene Levy or Stanley Tucci? Eugene Levy. Eugene Levy. Perfect. I'd choose the same. Um, okay. <laughs> Pick your movie mum. Jamie Lee Curtis or Jane Fonda? I don't like either of them. I do not like either of them. Um, and I was only whinging about Jamie Lee Curtis to somebody, uh, <clears throat> Ben, two days ago <laughs> and how much she shits me. Um, but then Jane Fonda can't stand her. Um, I would rather have a single father. No, you got to pick one. It's would you rather. But what if that was my actual dynamic at home in life? Like, it's my story. Um, I'm the director, and I'm directing that you choose a, okay. a movie. Mom. You're a, okay, you're a, so if, you're okay, a director because there's choose... no, no truth in this story. Okay. 
If you don't want to choose out of Jamie Lee Curtis or Jane Fonda, who would you pick as your movie mum? Well, I'm going to assume, given this story is all about, am I, is it about me? Is it my story? It's the Glenn movie. Right. And I'm playing myself. So therefore, I would have a little bit of sway on uh, who I get to choose. Okay. Okay. Who's a hot mum? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, you've got to think about after the cameras roll here. <laughs> like, no. who's, who's your MILF? Who's, um, who's the main MILF? Well, I can't say Catherine O'Hara because her and Eugene Levy have already done that. That makes me Daniel Levy and, you know. Yeah, or Alexis. Yeah, true. Uh, oh, okay. Alexis. Who do we have? <sighs> Very tough. I don't know. Like, can I have Olivia Coleman? Sure. That'll do. All right. Eugene Levy's your dad, Olivia Coleman's your mother. All right. Now you've got to pick your sister, Hilary Duff or Zoe Deschanel. I don't have any sisters. Okay. Hilary Duff or Hilary Duff. Yeah. Right choice. Yeah. Um, okay. Now your brother, Seth Green or Seth Rogen. Oh, really tough. I'm going to go Seth Rogen. But it's very, very close to the line. See, there. I can see you and Seth Rogen being brothers. Yeah. I can see that. I identify a little more with him. That said, Seth Green is really short, as am I. And anyway, we'll go with that. Yeah, it's Seth Rogen. Uh, and the, one thing, <laughs> the one thing I didn't choose, but you get to choose this. I wasn't planning on you picking your own mother, by the way. Um, the one thing that you get to choose who's your movie best friend? Who's my movie best friend? Is in like an actor? Who's your any... movie ride or die? It's you. It's a Glenn movie, and you always have that little sidekick best friend. Who is it? Oh, you mean it can't be Alison Hannigan? Sure, it can. There you go. Take that as a compliment. <laughs> Suck us is what you are. <laughs> um, no, I I wouldn't pick her at all. Um, who else? <laughs> Oh, I do not know. That's such a good question. Who would I want to hang out with? Dana Carvey? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. All right, so what did we go with? We went with Eugene Levy as your dad, Olivia Coleman as your mum, Hilary Duff as your sister, Seth Rogen as your brother, and Dana Carvey as your ride or die BFF. What's the film called? TV... TBA. TBA. Okay. What about Glenn Double N? <laughs> sure. There you go. Yeah. Glenn Double N. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> that way people we'll, choo- right. we'll choose the, the name next week. But there you go. That's, so that's, would you um, oh, look, that, uh, that was great. I love that you thought about that. And um, I certainly couldn't have conjured anything remotely similar. <laughs> I thought that was fun. It certainly was. Uh, was it surprising? The, the Jamie Lee Curtis thing surprised me, yeah. Okay, cool. Fair Jane Fonda, not so much, but yeah. Nah, cool. Um, have you just not noticed how fucking annoying she's when she's in, um, like, press junket mode? Like, No, I don't watch her in press junket mode. Okay, because, like, if, if you follow her on Facebook, and even if you don't, if you if you operate, maybe it's my film circles with the Halloween stuff and all that, but when mm. she is in press junket mode, you can't shake her off your fucking computer. She's everywhere. She's... It's not even that she's outspoken. She's just fucking loud wherever she goes, and it's just annoying. Oh, yeah. I think I'd get along with her really well. <laughs> yeah, no, she's awful. All right, how about some taglines, hey? Let's do it. I'm not going to get any of them. Okay, well, maybe this one. Uh, just think about the words in the tagline. It might help. Okay. T- tonight, the Fosters are going to get some action. The Fosters? Yeah, but it's more the story that takes place in that. So tonight, the Fosters are going to get some action. There's a play on words going on there. I want to say this is like a Weekend at Bernie's type movie. Because are the Fosters going to get some action or Mm. action? Oh, it would help if I knew who the Fosters were. Yes. Which I don't, so... Well, they are a husband and wife. Oh, is this like... Dick and Jane? Close. It's date night. 
I was that was going to be my second choice. I should have given you longer to answer. Right. That was going to be my second choice because I was going to that was actually going to be my first choice, and then I thought Dick and Jane would be the better choice. Then obviously, obviously it's a fun not. movie. It's a yeah, really I was movie. thinking more action rather than action. Yeah, yeah. Um, they went out wanting action and ended up getting action. Uh, um, All right. So the next one is kind of obvious when you know the title, which you're going to have to guess. So <laughs> miracles happen in the most unexpected places. That's the tagline on the poster. Miracle on 34th Street. Nope. It's the Green Mile. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. I um I was I bought the book of that. I don't know if you know the story of Stephen King when he published this one. He published it in volumes, right? So I think there's six volumes in total and you had to buy it every month, right? So you buy volume one and it's the first maybe two or three chapters. Then you got to wait a month for the next. And it was, so it was a series of volumes that comprised the whole wow. book. But it was really like he nearly committed suicide writing this one because he got to, I think, the, the audience was up to chapter four, right? And there was only like two more to go and he hadn't finished the book and he didn't know how to finish it. So he had like literally less than two months to finish it, which is a massive, massive pressure deadline for an author. Yeah. And um, he couldn't, he didn't have the end in his head, which he that's never happened to him before. So I remember reading it, going, "Far out! Are we actually going to get to the end of this? It's exciting." Wow. So there you go. That's awesome. That's a really cool story. I like that. Okay, here's uh, here's a couple. I I like these ones. So, it's finally safe to go back in the water. Oh, is that like Jaws 6 or something? <laughs> well, no, but it's obviously referencing Jaws. But what what this tagline is saying is that it's finally safe to go back in the water. Sharknado. Because all the sharks have gone into the tornado. <laughs> Zombie cool. beavers from outer space. That's a good movie. Have you seen it? Um, I've seen Zombie Beavers. I've seen, no, sorry. I've seen a little bit of. Actually, no, beavers. I'm I'm confusing it. Disco Beavers from Outer Space is the one I'm thinking of. Oh no, there's an actual movie called Zombie Beavers. Oh um, yeah, I know, actually, I know that. Yeah, Mum and somewhere. I turned it on one night. <laughs> we sat there and we just giggled and giggled. Um, no, I don't know. It's Flipper. Oh, a weird tagline. <laughs> it's a Flipper, but okay. It's it's a very weird tagline considering there's like. 25 to 30 years separating the two movies. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have that one person in your life who had dolphin everything as well? Like those little dolphin figurines yeah. and the cups with the blue sloshy liquid. Did you have yeah. that person in your life? Cert yeah, okay. Certainly did. Little crystal ones and all yeah. that kind of shit and a whole fucking glass cabinet full of them and yeah. Yeah. Okay, and that, cool. That, yeah. That's like one that's like one grandmother's house and then the auntie's house has all the owls and yeah. shit like that and yeah. <laughs> Fuck that stuff. Um, and they clean it. That's the thing. It's always clean, which means they go through that fucking collection all the time and clean it. Um, trigger warning. Sorry, people. Right, <laughs> next one. Okay, this is a great one. Attila the Hun, Ivan the Terrible, Al Capone. They were all seven once. Um, oh... Is um, they were all seven ones. Mm -hmm. All of those horrible people from history were seven at one point in time. <sighs> I feel like I'll know it, but I just don't. You know it's what I mean? Problem like... child. Problem child. No, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> oh. Okay. Get behind, problem child. Get behind that movie. You would love it. It's um. Directed by the guy that directed Happy Gilmore. It's got Gilbert Gottfried. And it's just about a, a little... And John Ritter's in it. He's amazing. Michael Richards is in it. It's all about a little boy that's um, been rejected by family after family from the orphanage. And oh. he's got no home. But one guy says, no matter what this kid's issues are, I'm going to adopt him and I'm going to give him all the love I can. And this kid is the... It's Satan reincarnate. He's a fucking oh, terrible kid. Shit. And <laughs> and this family cannot give him back fast enough. It's funny as. Oh. Okay, so this last tagline is, he's bad, she's worse. He's bad, she's worse. Yep. He's bad, she's worse. Think back 30 seconds ago. 
You're asking a lot here. <laughs> Um, you said Gilbert Gottfried. Um, it's problem child two. Oh, for fuck's sake! Because <laughs> it's a girl with the boy in part two, and it's double the trouble. <laughs> oh my god! I should have known. I should have. Yeah. known. <laughs> I love those movies. They're so funny. All right, <laughs> all right. We're just about out of time. Anything you want to end on? Uh, that <laughs> I rewatched Toy Soldiers, which is always a fun rewatch. Um, if you don't rewatch that like regularly, you're doing something wrong. So I recommend going watching that again. <sighs> Just I rewatched it with my husband, and when Will Wheaton spoiler alert, when Will Wheaton dies and gets shot, my husband actually said, "Oh, I really liked him." <laughs> was that was that hubby's first watch? No, I reckon he's seen it before a long time ago when we like first got together. Yeah. A really long time ago. So um yeah, we were definitely due for a rewatch there. And he wanted some action and I wanted some eighties nostalgia. So we both got we want what we wanted. So it was great. Fantastic. That's like uh oh, I won't say it. I was gonna repeat that date night tagline and then I was gonna like drop your names in there, but I won't do that. All right. Um <laughs> what was the other thing I was gonna say? So before we wrap up, it's obviously it's October. How is your Halloween viewing going? Have you done any more spooky movies? No, no spooky movies as of yet. We have been fairly busy. However, there is um we are gonna be sitting down watching Hocus Pocus 2 with the kids. So hopefully that'll be a fun little viewing. Yes, I do mean to sit down and watch that myself. Hopefully I do before Halloween. It would be uh, good to catch it beforehand. Uh, you yep. obviously seen the original? Okay. Well, you know. You never know I with you, Chloe. You never know. Loud you, <laughs> you never know with you. <laughs> I've seen it. I was so in love with, um, I think his name is like Omri Katz. I think he, oh, God, he was gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I watched it a lot and I loved Thora Birch. I just, I wanted to be Thora Birch. So I loved her a lot as well. So I watched it a lot. Groovy. Well, when you watch it, if it's before I do, I want to know what you think and vice versa. I will let you know. Woo. So we've still got a couple of weeks of Halloween, so let's get excited about potentially some Halloween movies. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. Halloween movies. I'll get them on the list. Yes. All right. I'm going to let you go and we'll, uh, we'll same time next week. Sure. And I'll, I'll come prepared. <laughs> okay.